All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechach Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And um, today we're just breaking bread. Uh, this week's assignment was the book of uh, 1 John. Uh, so we're just going to break bread through the scriptures. You know, uh, maybe brothers have questions, you know, points that uh, stood out to them, whatever. Um, and hopefully edification can come from it uh, for the um, the elect. All right. So uh, without further ado, we're going to open up. Go ahead. This is First John. I'm sorry. This is the book of John, St. John, chapter 21, verse 17. He said unto him a third time, and this is as Yahweh Shah is telling Peter to feed his sheep a third time. Right. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him a third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shai said unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself, and walketh whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest. Where thou wouldest not. I'm like it, where thou wouldest not. And I'm just doing research on that. That's going into Peter and him being crucified. I'm going to do research on that. Right. Okay. He was going to have to suffer martyrdom right. as our Lord Yahweh Shai did. Right. But verse 19 says this. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify the most high. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Then Peter turneth, turning about, seeth the disciple. Whom Yahweh Shai loved follow. And who was that? That's John the Revelator. That's John the Revelator. Mm -hmm. All right. Which, Which was Yahweh Shai's like best friend, his favorite. You know, the most, whereas the most high was uh, dear to Peter, all of them, but Peter was his favorite. Yahweh Shai's favorite was John. That's right. All right. Which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Mm -hmm. That's the question he asked. Who was the one that was going to betray him? Right. And he told him, and John, with the revelator, was the only one that Yahweh Shai told who was going to betray him. Mm. You know? Wow. Which shows you that relationship that they had, like you said, right, Saquon. Right, right. Verse 21. Peter, seeing him, saith to Yahweh Shai, Lord, and what shall this man do? Yahweh Shai said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, mm -hmm. what is that to thee? Follow thou me. And when you go, if, if I may, when you go into that, he's pretty much asking, what are you worried about him for? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I already told you the lot that you was going to have to fulfill. Whatever he's going to have to fulfill, he's going to have to fulfill it. Right. At the end of the day, you're still going to have to follow your lot and follow me anyway. Right. You know? Verse 21. Peter, seeing him, said unto Yahweh Shai, Lord, Lord, and what shall this man do? Yahweh Shai said unto him, if I will that he, and that he being John the Revelator, Tarry till I come. Mm. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then when this saying went abroad among the brethren, all right, mm -hmm. check it's that saying when Yah when Yahushai said that, that saying went out among the brethren what Yahushai said as pertaining to John, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, If I will that he wait or tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren. That that disciple should not die. Woo! That disciple should not. He ain't gonna die at that point because he had a very, very yeah. heavy portion and lot that he was gonna receive on the Isle of Patmos. Yep. So when we're talking about this John, we're not talking about John the Baptist. All right. This is John. He was the one of the apostles, one of the direct uh, uh, disciples under Yahweh Shai. Okay. Go ahead. Yet yeah. Yahweh Shai said not unto him. He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come. Till I come. What is that to thee? Right. This is the this is the disciple which testifieth of these things. And right. it's because he this is the book of John. Right. Okay. And wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Yep. And there are also many other things which Yahweh Shai did, the which 
if they should be written every one, I mm -hmm. suppose that even the world itself mm -hmm. could not contain the books that should be written a mind. You know, and um, when you go into that, those disciples were under the misconception that Yahweh was saying that John the Revelator was going to not die, period, all the way into the end of the second, when Yahweh came the second time. Right. Mm -hmm. But all he was asking the question was saying, hey, what is it to him? If, 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 it's, if it's the most high decision for him to dwell until I make my second coming, what is it to you? Right. And that's all he was saying. And the irony of it was that he was the final disciple out of those 12 that lived. And he preserved him to write the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. And that's the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Right. You know? That's right. That's the right. The record of the Lord, like it talks about in the fifth chapter. Right. So right. John. right. 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 And, and I find beautiful about John, you know, um, the way that he's out of all of the uh, writings, the way he presents Yahweh Shai, it's always from a, um, from, a from a heavenly perspective. Um, as we can, um, let's just get First John, the first chapter. Yeah, straight up. Let's just read like that first, those first three verses, because he's very important, you know, to what we have. You know, he saw the end of Babylon. He saw it all and wrote it as a vision. He was preserved to be on the Isle of Patmos as a slave, all right, but he was preserved to receive that vision for us to have to understand and come to life in these latter days to be like, damn. This is true. His witness is true, yep. because what he, uh, the the mark of the beast, everything like he saw it, man. man. He received the heavy. He saw Yahweh Shai in his. He saw Yahweh Shai in his heavenly state. Straight up, yep. straight up. He saw it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was the uh, he was the only the disciple out of the twelve to right. see Yahweh Shai being crucified. So right. right, right. He actually was there right. in the midst of, of the Marys. Right. John was right. there to bear right. witness of him. Because the rest of them flee, they flew, they they mm -hmm. they were scared. Yeah. You know, basically they they from the persecution they were like, oh shit. Yep. And Yahweh Shai told them that they were going to do that. They did that because it was prophesied to them to do that. Mm -hmm. They weren't cowards. You know, they right. just it was just the part it was it was written straight up. But he was there, John. You know, he was there, and um, he represents a very, very, very important thing for what we have. Because <laughs> I think it talks about he was a disciple under the John the Baptist. Right. So the Lord came on the scene, and then he right. started following the Lord. Right. And I got that piece right. up in uh, John, right. the right. first chapter. Right. That's right. Go ahead. Well, you done with that? Yeah. No, we ain't we ain't, well, we ain't yeah, started, I'll, but I'll go I'll ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. This is uh, St. John 1 and 32. It says, and John bare record, saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode with him. And I knew him not. Mm -hmm. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. So this is John the Baptist, you know, mm -hmm. breaking it down to his disciples. And it talks about two disciples. Yep. Continue on. Yep, yep, yep. It says, verse 34, and I saw and bear record that. This is the son of the most high. Mm. So he knew from the gate who the Messiah was, you know. Mm -hmm. It says again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples. And it says, uh, and looking upon Yahweh Shah as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of the Most High. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. And so after the, John the Baptist broke it down to his disciples, they started following the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I think the other and one that was, was Peter Andrew. and Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Andrew and Peter. yeah Peter and Andrew. It, it, it's so like if I'm if, if I make it some Andrew yeah. had to go to Peter. Well, right. Andrew, to it, it was him. Andrew and John. It was yeah. Andrew it and was, uh, mm -hmm. Andrew went to Peter and yeah. broke it down. It's like, man, this right. is the Messiah. Yeah, 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 right. 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 It, when you keep reading, it actually says that. Right, right. But that's that's, that's the point I want to get that he was he was uh, came up under John the Baptist. Yeah. He was baptized by him, but then basically John the Baptist says the one that's coming, he's okay. preferred above me. So and John, okay, the Lord. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa, yeah. So yeah. John and Andrew. I thought that yeah. was interesting. John I didn't know and he was following okay. John the Baptist at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was in his camp pretty much again. Yeah. And the Lord came to see him. Right. You know? Right. And when you read that, I'm sorry. Yep. You got to touch him. Huh? No, I was going to say, uh, when, when, when John transferred that, that when John tra pretty much transferred the priesthood, mm -hmm. not John, but you know, through the Spirit of the John the Baptist, yeah. He transferred, yeah, kind of John the Baptist transferred it to Yahweh's side. That transition period was very important. Mm -hmm. John was like, "Look, nah, I'm not the one." Right now, the Most High did. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm the one that was prophesied to speak in the wilderness, but He's the one. Right. Yep. You see, what I'm saying like He's the one that. Nah, He's the one that got it. That's the Messiah. Right. 
Straight and John up. and John the Revelator, man, when you read John and first, second, and third John, and, and no, first John, bro, he emphasized he emphasized how how Yahweh Shah was the one. Right, right, right. Yeah. He was Absolutely. like, look, this is what we heard directly right. out of his mouth. Right. Right. This is what we need to do in order to be this is what we need to do in order to be looked at in the eyes of the Heavenly Father right. Right. as his sons. Right. Right. This is what the Lord told us, and we're witnesses to tell you exactly what the Lord told us. Right. We're literally right. telling you what the Lord told us. That's yep. right, bro. And just to add to that, um, when you read John, like when you when you because the thing about it is when we read these epistles, when we read these gospels and such, especially those epistles, like they're literally putting their testimony there. So you're really getting in the mind of that person that's writing that as you see, you literally see how they write, how they, right. how they speak. So going into what I'm saying is when you read that example in John, it goes into Andrew. Yep. That was one of them. Yep. But it doesn't mention the second one. And when I was reading John... And going into it, you notice that John never talked about himself. Right. He even referenced himself as the, the disciple Yahweh I loved. Right. He would never speak about himself and say that was me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just speaking like mm. that as John. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense wow. why it goes into go, like Andrew being there and then the second disciple. He said Andrew. Because he, he never talked about himself saying, loosely paraphrasing right. as John the Revelator, okay. this was me. You know what I'm saying? He, he he always put himself to the side. Even in the Gospel of John the Revelator, in the book of John, St. John, he never really talked about himself. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that really stands out a whole lot going into the level of humility that he had. Especially as we're going into 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. He doesn't say it's John. He goes into the 1 John, and then he considers the elder to the elect lady. Right. And then the letter to Gaius in 3 John. But he never speaks of himself, mm. which shows his mass amount of humility and why Yahweh I loved him so much. Right. You know? Out to the angel in Revelation 19. The angel was like to tell him, like, man, I'm Get your up. fellow brother, mm. man. Right, right, right. Straight, Straight up. up. Straight up. So let's get First John, the first chapter. Because even then when you get uh, his writing in uh, John, what does it start out? What is the first thing he say? In the so beginning was the word. That's right. <laughs> he presented Yahweh Shai that's from a right. heavenly perspective, man. In, be, in the beginning, mm -hmm. he's letting you know, look, bro, the the one that dwelt among us, who, who we walk with, he was that's the first spirit created by the most high. That's he came right. in the flesh. He said the word was made flesh. Straight up. You know, go ahead. Nah, this is the book of first John, chapter one, verse one. It reads, That which is from the beginning, which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. <laughs> For the life was manifested. Read that again. Yeah, Read that again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. First John 1 1, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, right. which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. He touched them. He touched yes. your shot. He handed him some water. He learned on them. He got rebuked by him. He saw Yahweh Shai face to face, bro. And this is his testimony written to us. Come, come. And it, and it says, which we have looked upon. Man. John, the third chapter goes like the famous scripture, John 3 and 16. Right. But the 15th verse goes into the example of number 21 of that serpent that was in the wilderness, that right. brass serpent. Right. And he said, if you look upon this, right. you know, you shall not die. Like those are of those men that looked upon him directly. Yeah. And, and, and that were delivered and saved and they walked right. with him directly. Man. Right. Why do you think they took those gruesome deaths? That's right. Because they saw the miracles. They were eyewitnesses eye to his, eye his, his, his glory. They saw it, bro. That's he probably did certain things amongst them that ain't written. Of course, we know he did. Straight up. But just imagine what they saw. Straight up. They saw him after he resurrected, bro. They see him, bro, with that, with that little girl that got, uh, that, that rose up from the dead. Right. When he bring Peter, James, and John. John Peter, seen that. John was there. John was in the room with him. Right. He seen it. He was like, man, hey, we witnessed this. Right. I, I personally seen this. Right. And only those who hear this are going to accept this. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's why, that's why the Lord said in John 17, he said what? And those, he roughly paraphrased, and those, and, and those that believe it through thy word. Right. Well, you see what I'm saying? Through whose word? Yeah. Who? Yeah, the witnesses. The witnesses, bro. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? 
Yep. I got something real quick. Go ahead. It's the book of John, excuse me, Luke 24. I'm sorry, verse 36, but the point is in 39. And this is when Yahweh Shah appeared to his disciples. It says, and as they and, and as they thus spake, Yahweh Shah himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thy and why do thoughts arise in thy hearts? And that word thoughts goes with doubts, right? Doubt. Yeah. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and say, mm. yeah. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see as ye see me have. Man, he can he man, bro. Luke twenty four and thirty nine. Let's go. He said, handle me. He said, look. Yeah. He pulled up his shirt. He was like, man, look at the, you know what I'm saying? I got, this is where I got stabbed by the centurion. Right. Yeah. Look at my hands. Yeah. Like, this is me. The Thomas. He's yeah. talking to Thomas. Yeah. Because yeah. this, this, this is equivalent to the precept of John 20. Yep. When Thomas didn't believe. Right. Mm -hmm. But he did that in right. the midst of all his disciples. He was right. like, look, this is handle me. Touch me. Yeah. It's me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when he said, they said, we have handled the word of life. Right. right. They literally was like, damn. It's crazy. This can manifested. He said, "A spirit have not flesh and blown bones." So that cuts the virgin birth. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I ain't never, I ain't never put that one together. I mean, that can be used. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The word manifested. Yeah, he though. was in a, he was in a human body, like right. He was in the flesh again. Flesh. Like, he yeah. was just in a whole. He was, he was in the flesh, but it was like resurrected. Right. He was in a, he was in a resurrected state, but he was in a different. It's, right, yeah. the word his manifest. inward man, yeah. his inward man was on a like on a whole nother level. He was disappearing and reappearing, right, 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 up, right, 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 right. But I, I'll go back to First John and read that verse. And it's gonna say it in verse two, yo. Says, Start at one again. Come, First John one and one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Mm. And I just want to make one more quick point. Mm -hmm. How heavy that is for him to be, Yahweh shot and prophesied from the beginning that Moses prophesied of, all the prophets prophesied of, and the disciples seen him. Right. Like, they was like, man, this was the, he, this is him. This is he? This is him. This is from the, in the beginning, the Elohim created, and it calls him the head of the church. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, uh, what's that in Colossians? Uh, I'll get it real quick. Uh, Colossians, the first chapter. He's the head of the church, but the church started from the foundation of the earth. But he tells you in John, the first, in John, the word was made flesh. Like he harped on the spiritual aspect of Yahweh Shai. Right. And what he means, like what's going on here, you know? Yeah, it always started with the spirit. That's yep. what he emphasized, basically. Right. This is uh, Colossians uh, chapter 1 and 18, and he is the head of the body. The church, who was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. All right. First of many brethren. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's That's the right. first. He's That's the right. he's the head of the church. He's the only begotten son. He's that first spirit. Yeah. Right. Right. And what did he tell uh, the disciples? All right. John fifteen and twenty seven. And ye also shall bear witness. Because ye have been with me from the beginning. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. It tells us we were chosen from the foundation of the earth. So what does that mean? Like we were a part of that, that heavenly Jerusalem. So that's what John is saying as we go back. Read that again. John, John 1. John 1, 1. <laughs> we ain't going to never get past that one. <laughs> that's, 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 that first verse is heavy. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of information packed. This is what, what John is saying. Yep, yep. It says, that which was from the beginning, which we know is talking about Yahweh Shah, mm -hmm. which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Faith come by hearing, by the way. Yep. It mm -hmm. says, which, are, which we have looked upon, right. and our hands have handled of the word of life. That's Yahweh Shah. Keep going. For the life was manifested when it started with the spirit, if I can say. You yeah. see, the life manifested. The spirit can manifest in the flesh, just as Yahweh yeah. himself did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it all started with the word. Right. You know? right. And then Yahweh Shai said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. Yep. 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 You know, all those go into Yahweh Shai at the end of the day, the word of life. Yep. Yep. Verse 2. For the life was manifested, revealed, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life 
And when you go into that word show, it literally goes to teach or to preach, right? It says, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, the first thing Which was yep. with the Father, which was the Father, but then made manifest unto us. us. <laughs> John was like, look, we seen him that was talked about from the beginning who right. was already there. Right. He was with us. Right. He sucked with us in the flesh. We seen him. Right. We, we ate with him. We right. drank wine with him. And right. He was right there with him. Right. Right. That's heavy, bro. Right, because it tells us we were chosen from the foundation of the earth, but where do we get that understanding at? Moses received it. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, the Allah Hayyam, he gives us our legacy. Yeah. Like, and our legacy started in the heavens. Right. With Yahweh being the first, first, uh, the only begotten. Right. From that came those first fruit spirits, man. Exactly. You know? Just Everything manifested from that spirit of Yahweh That's us, it, bro. That's you know? it. That's it. Nah, just a quick precept, because John said, we see it, bear witness of it, and we show it unto you. You know? Going that it being the light, which is Yahweh Shai, right? This is Galatians chapter 1, verse 16. We we'll start at 15, just two quick verses. But when it pleased the Most High, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, and that's showing Yahweh Shai unto the world. You know, you're revealing that life, that way, you know, unto the world by your deeds, by how you walk. Because we, if we're of those, the, 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 that number, you know, we looked upon him like John said in 1 John, the first chapter. It says, to reveal a son unto me, that I might preach him among the heathen immediately, I confer not with flesh and blood. That's it on that. Right. All right, we can read that the next verse 3. Okay, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. It says, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that he also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. See that fellowship is that is that that fellowship is that intimate relationship. You see what I'm saying? Having that fellowship with Yahweh by Hashem Shai, John is like, look, the same John is like, look, what we declare unto you, I'm telling you this so that you can have the same fellowship that we have with him. Right. Mm -hmm. From the beginning. We're telling you this. So that you can, you can be with us. Right. Right. And he's like, he ain't talking to everybody. See what I'm saying? Right. Right. You mentioned thinking that precept in John 14 where he said, and it said, uh, 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 Yahweh Shah said, Me and my father will come unto you and make our abode with you. In John 14, 23. You know what I'm saying? That That's that intimate relationship. You know? Verse right. 4. It says, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. <laughs> right. And this, this dude, what, uh, what I get out of his writing is his mindset. You know, your mindset as a man of the Lord, you know, as a brother, you know, he focused on the foundational principles of brotherhood, you know, of true love, of what it means to walk in light. And this cuts any Christian talking about we don't have to keep the law. He tells you to strive to keep the laws, bro. All right. Now he tells us that our sins are forgiven if we are a part of that body. All right. But he know and nowhere in there is he like, go ahead and do what the hell you want to do. No, there's a standard you're supposed to live by as an Israelite, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you believe in this Bible, all right? Mm -hmm. um, got some? I mean, it, it, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if you want to go down the whole first chapter because I know you mentioned just bringing up. No, nah, we can bring out points. You know what I'm saying? If you got to, if y'all see a point in First John, the first chapter, you know what I'm saying? If y'all saw anything. Okay. Um, I think I had a, some points like in um, chapter in the second chapter, but go ahead. We can bring out your points. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, but go ahead. Read, read what you got. Okay. Well, this is First John chapter one verse eight. It's going down to that Christian doctrine mainly. They right. don't, they don't outwardly teach it vocally, but their actions teach it. Why? Just do what you want to do because the Lord came for you. Right. And, but just to add to what you, just to land back on what you said. This is First John chapter eight verse eight. If we say that we have no sin. First John chapter eight. I'm sorry, chapter, chapter one verse eight. Okay. 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 So like this, okay. I was about to say, man. Yeah. All this, you know, I mean, first, first John chapter one verse eight. You opened up this week. I know, right? He found the good, the, <laughs> the, the key of David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Got the key. This is a. Uh, this is. I'm gonna start at verse seven. This is First John chapter one verse seven. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, which again is that friendship that Tazamajis went into, and the blood of Yahweh Shai. 
Hamashiach, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Woo! Right? Mm -hmm. Right. If we say that we have no sin, we declare ourselves. We deceive. We deceive ourselves. Yep. And the truth is not in us. And the reason why I wanted to bring that point out is you made the statement going into, like, receive from John. Right. The, the things you receive, like brotherly love. That's one of the things right. I received from it. Right, right. And also showing you that you don't got it without your house shy, but you right. still got to strive. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we're still in his flesh. But he's going into how if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So it makes me think of a lot of uh, people in Christianity will, will declare, I'm saved, but they don't have un the understanding right. on what that means. Right. Because they'll put it out there under the, under the guise of I can do whatever I want. Right. And I'm, I'm good. Nasty ass. Nasty right. ass. But if you have that mentality, right. the love of Yahweh Shai is not within you. And it's all centered around sex and food. That's right. Straight up. Those are the principal reasons why Jake is like, there's no way we can keep the law. It's centered around sex and food. They want to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and money. Right. And money. Mm -hmm. Lust at the end of the day. Absolutely. The flesh. Absolutely. You know? Because when, when you read the book of First John... You know, if I may real quick, something that I got out of it is the fact of how John literally mentioned numerous amounts of times, like, look, if you're born of the most high, it says the sons of God, they're not gonna commit no sin. You see what I'm saying? Now we're gonna we're gonna train. We're in this flesh, so we're gonna slip. Right. You see what I'm saying? But this world teaches you that slipping is okay with the Lord. Right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But what John is like, no, you should be striving to walk just like how he walked. He like, no, you we should be striving to walk in the light just as he is in the light right now. Right. He's up there yeah, with the most high. Yeah. Can I get a piece of it? Yeah. yeah. So that's the that's the that's the mark. You try, you know, of course we can't do it in his flesh, but damn, no one that's the head of the church. We should want to mimic him. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, this is in the next uh, chapter, one of my favorite chapters, First John uh, chapter two, and I'm gonna just start at verse two. It says that's the that was the point. That was the uh, that was one of the points yeah, I had. Yeah. And I'm gonna <laughs> so, go down yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. just get some of his talking points. I'm gonna read down like through seven. Right. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And when you go into that word propitiation, it means atonement. You know, there has to be a blood sacrifice uh, for the remission of sins. It says, and he is the propitiation or atonement for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, meaning the, the, the children of Israel. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Woo! Here, he finna get juicier right, though. Right, because well, real quick. <laughs> now, if they say, now, when the Christians say, well, the commandment is love, what's the cut? What is love? What is love? How do we quantum for how do we how do we pinpoint how do we measure what, love is, what yeah. measure does does love just have? It's empty? Right. Right. It's just like it's vague, like Right. What I feel in my right. heart. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. what they say. Right. Agape love right. is just a big yeah, funny yeah. feeling. Yeah. Love is the fulfillment of the law. That is how you love. Obedience. By keeping it's obedient to the right. laws. You wouldn't you wouldn't uh murder someone. Yep. Love would lead to you not murdering someone. Holding your neighbor accountable. Holding your neighbor neighbor accountable. Loving your mother and your uh and uh, being honoring your parents. Yep. That's love. That's love. Those are things that when you do them, the Lord is at least now it won't save you. Right. But it when, when it comes time to measure you as a person, your spirit and your intent, that stuff is going to matter, bro. That's right. <laughs> if you Mercy. were just walking around murdering, stealing, yeah. bowing to idols. I yeah. mean, you know, That's come on. He said, my last thing I tell him to you. Keep from idols. Keep, keep from bowing down my idols. The right. chip is an idol. Last thing he, said in the first time, first he emphasized first time. the obedience, but he said, he's basically saying, but if you do mess up, we have a propitiation right. for our sin. Right, right, But right. the code is to be obedient. Do what the Lord told you to do if you proclaim to be in the Lord, right. if you proclaim to know him. But it, he going to go harder. Verse 4, it says, he that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Lying. And the truth is not in him. And this should cut all of these Christians, man, who proclaim to love and know the Lord and know sweet Jesus, but they don't want to keep any of the commandments. They'll tell you that the laws is done away with. Oh, we don't got, we not under that no more. <laughs> Guess what? And this is in the New Testament. Nasty right? ass. It says, but whoso keepeth his word in him barely or truthfully is the love of the most high perfected. Hereby know we that are, Salaki, hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abided in him ought himself also 
So to walk, even as he walked, as he that's what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. So that's the he was the perfect example of how to walk. Remember them wristbands? What would Jesus do? Right. But that's the mindset to be in. Let this mind be in you that was also that's in Hamashiach. True. That's right. the best way to, to try to walk. But if you do slip in that journey, we do have that propitiation. We do have that covering still, you know? That's right. That's right. Yep. You know? Yep. And that, that goes back into the first verse, of, um, first and second verse of the book of First John. Mm -hmm. Going into Yahavashah where he says, which we have looked upon and have held the word of life. It says, for this life is manifested that we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you. Mm -hmm. So he's showing unto you. We're supposed to show unto the Walking. world. And walk after that way as Yahweh shall walk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that is the fulfillment of the law. And that shows that the elect, Lord's will and worth that number, but the elect will be fulfilling the law. Right, right. As our Lord Yahweh shall fulfill the law because we're showing that way unto you as our Lord showed it unto those men that were with him. Right. Make, which, would in, which would in turn make you those lights that shine in the dark world. Right. When you a light that shines in the dark world, just a matter if, if the light and the darkness are distinguished between one another, you know when it's dark and you know oh, yeah. it's light. It should be seen like, man, this is something different about this person. Yep. See what I'm saying? It should be like, dang, something, something's different about this individual because they walk different. Wisdom maketh our face to shine on right. right. the scripture right. says. So right. you're going to illuminate amongst darkness when you got that light on you, man. And John basically said Yahweh Shah came to fulfill the law. He's going to go into that. Like Yahweh Shah in Matthew 5 and 17 says. I come not to destroy but to fulfill because that's a big Christian de deceptive doctrine as well. Uh, we don't, you know, we're under the blood of, of the Lord, you know. Yep. We don't got to do those old ordinances no more, but I'm going to read the seventh verse. It says, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, mm -hmm. which ye have heard, which ye have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Meaning there was an order from the, there was an order we were to walk in we were obedient from the beginning, man. Mm -hmm. it, our whole legacy goes back to direct obedience mm -hmm. to the Most High through His Son in, in the creation of the elements and the forming of all things, man. Right. But just that sacrificial element yeah. is done away with, like it talks about right. in Hebrews, the eighth chapter, right. because we're under, uh, uh, it, it's established upon better promises, right. the second covenant. Right. You know, right, but we still supposed to we're keep. We still the, supposed oh, to keep. The, yeah. It's in full effect mode. It was always yeah. about order, bro. Yeah. It was always about obedience to a way. Right. Like From that the, covenant was never disannulled, man. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, now the, the 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 first covenant was disannulled. All right, but the sacrificial system under Yahweh Shai, we are now that sacrifice. Right. We just got to restructure right. the deal. Like, like right. these players, these contracts, right. they may have four years for 80 mil, right. but then they get the ball in, in the first two years and they might go to the, the GM or the team and be like, hey, I want to restructure my deal upon yeah. better promises. Yeah. Now, even it may be certain tenets of the original deal that you still overpay, right. right. bound by, but it's the same thing with us now. We, we're not subject to the debt. You know, right. That will come with right. breaking the law. Right, right. You right. know, we got grace. We got grace. Right. So that's the upgrade for us. It's all advantageous for us, man. Right. And that, and that old commandment that that John was talking about, even Yahweh Shah mentioned a new. He said a new law I give unto you. Yeah. Right. That new yeah. law or that old way is what? Mm -hmm. It's love. Right. It's, 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 it's that keeping love. It's love. It's keeping yeah. the commandments. Right. That's what it is. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. If you do these. If you love your neighbor as yourself and you love your hollow wash and out shower with all your mind, soul, and spirit, you are fulfilling the law. Oh, yeah. If you do these right. two things. That's right. Actually, that, that word held right But just the balance is knowing that's not going to save you. It's not going to save you. We always still got to depend and trust in the Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's it, yeah. Come on. This is John 13 and 34. The book of the St. John 13 and 34. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. That's John 13? This is the book of St. John, chapter 13, verse 34. Oh, yeah, because when you go up in that chapter, you know, I was trying to walk to the top of the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And when you go into that word love there in the Greek, that word is kainos. Because there's a misconception, especially in the Christian world, that the Havashah wrote something completely new. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But when you actually go into the law, in Leviticus, the 19th chapter, starting at verse 15 through 18, it goes into the same exact thing, not to hate your neighbor, not to hate your neighbor and to show him love. But when you go into that word kinos there, which is new, it doesn't only just mean new, but it means something that's uncommon and unused. Refresh. Because Refresh. when you go into the history of Jake, especially around that time period where the Romans were in power, Jake was tripping and everything, that was something that wasn't commonly used among the brethren, man. 
When Jacob's hating on one another, you know what I'm saying? When you go into the world of Israel back around that time, it was a lot of bickering and stuff going on, which makes all the more sense why the priest Yadaka is going to that in 1 John 2, as John is going into that new commandment. And if you don't walk in love, you are in darkness. Oh, yeah. When you go into that word darkness, one of the definitions for that, when you look in the lexicon, is to be shady. It says shadiness. And when you go into that word shadiness, that word goes into pretty much being being um, unreliable when troubles come. It goes into really just being um, you can't really trust that person because of their history of what they've done. You know what I'm saying? And that goes into the example of Jake's back then. It was something that was in common unto them because they were so busy worried about themselves due to that mindset of what was around them, man. So when Yahweh Shai came into the flesh and he came to the scene as Yahweh Shai, he actually showed true brotherly love and how it was supposed to be done, you know? And that's how you fulfill the law right there, man, because that's being fulfilled, you know? And if I may, and I'm done, well, you know, just, just in this point, but that's when you go into Matthew 22, verses 26 through 30, going to Yahweh Shai saying, if you love one another as yourself, all the laws hang on this. You know what I'm saying? All the laws hang on that, man. Because that's how you can receive redemption. Right. Because true love is charity. The law is love. Sins. Right. right. The that's law right. is love. Like even the, the laws on how to treat the earth, it leads to it's love. You gotta love the earth. Yeah. It's, it's love. It, it it leads to life. That's right. The that's laws right. lead to life, man. All right. I got a piece Go ahead. John chapter fifteen, verse uh, ten. Uh, yeah, I'll start verse 8. Actually, verse 9. It says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Woo! You see what I'm saying? So it's like, he's like, look, if you keep the words I tell unto you, right. you're going to abide in my servant. Right. Right. Just as I kept what the Father told unto me. Right. Like, and I and, and, and I abided his love because he, I did not transgress my father's holy right. He kept the laws, bro. He kept the laws. And when you read the scriptures, it tells you plainly that Yahweh Shai literally came on the scene and said everything that the Heavenly Father told him to say. He didn't right. change nothing. Everything that he came on the scene to say was exactly what the Lord told him to do. And he did it. He fought and he, he, he showed us how to be obedient to the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? This is what the Lord is looking for. Oh, he's on the earth. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. That's what the Lord is truly looking at. Now, are you going to be obedient to the things I tell you? Right, right. In a world full, full, filled with sin. In a world full of sin. Right, it's, right. It's actually in Titus. It tells you that and we got to walk righteously in a wicked world. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> he's a representation of the Heavenly Father in, yeah. the, in, the, in, the, in the flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to 1 John 2. Did you uh, have some more of that? Because you, you said you was going to read down to seven, huh? Uh, yeah, I, I read to seven already. Okay, I, I okay. To seven already. Another dope point in this chapter um, is in uh, verse 13. It says, I write unto you fathers because ye have, um, you know, ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men. <laughs> All right. You see that? He constantly yeah. takes it back to the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Because understanding that aspect, because there's a lot of people that don't really get that. You know, like this legacy what we're fighting to establish was that order from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And when you understand that, that should mature you in the spirit. That should that should give you should be absolutely immortal. If you really understand what we're fighting for, what the Bible is saying, like goodness gracious, bro. It's heavy. The order from the beginning is getting ready to be placed upon earth as a government. So he constantly reminds you. That's why he is always presenting Yahweh from this heavenly perspective. Because that is the, the foundation of what we are. We're just in this flesh now, you know. But he says this. He says, I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because you have known the Father. Then he says it again. He repeats, I, he repeats himself. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. And he elect all the fathers, you know. But then he could be talking about the mature in the church at that time, the elders of the church. All right. All right, and then the young men that were under them. But even that goes spiritual. It's all spiritual. 
All right. It says, um, because you have known him that is from the beginning, <laughs> I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. Yeah, through the word. And it tells you that he tells you that in John, uh, in Revelation, he says, and they overcome. Get that? Yeah. 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 Revelation chapter, chapter 12, uh, verse 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, okay, which was shed from the foundation of the earth, all right, and by the testimony which they uh, uh, had. And he's telling you, look, the word of God abides in you. So amongst the elect, that's where the word dwells through the Holy Spirit. And that's how we overcome. That's our victory. That's what Esau is trying to escape from through his pseudoscience. He's trying to create an alter reality <laughs> based upon, you know, the nations not being who they are, the us not being who we supposed to be, him being somebody, you know, he's, he's bugged out. But the victory is through the Holy Spirit, man. You know, I got something for you. go ahead. Romans 16 and 20. It says, uh, Acts 1 verse 19, it says, For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad thereof, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. In the power of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Mm. Make the our grace, enemies our footstool. Yep. The grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know what you're about to say. Genesis. Yep. <laughs> Y'all should bruise his head. That's right. Bro, that's right. The, the, he told, yep. He's yeah, he gonna bruise our feet. Yeah, he's gonna bruise our heel. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna basically bruise their head or that's crush right. their head. Yeah. Yep. Bro, that thought came to my mind immediately. Right when he's going to the when he goes to the priesthood, yeah. in this here, it says Genesis 3 and 15 is a priesthood. Right, right. Which you is that because if we read nah, in nah. first John, we read what? It said what? It says I write unto you fathers because ye have known him from the beginning. Right. So how do we know the Lord from the beginning? From the beginning of what? Right. In the beginning, power said, in the beginning, let them be, you know what I'm saying? We were there. Lord, the Allah we don't, we don't, that's the elect. That's the right. right. You know what I'm saying? I just created the, the heavens and the earth. Yep. Said you have a two yada cup? Uh, it, it kind of passed. It's, it's awkward. I got one real quick. No, it's yeah. a real quick one. It might come back around. But um, this is the book of St. John, chapter 10, verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And that's just really quick, because Yahweh has said, I know them. In the book of 1 John, chapter, you know, what we just read, it mm -hmm. says they have known him from the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it, it, it's really a relationship from before, from before the earth, way before the earth. You know, that the elect have that relationship, though those that were in the beginning, the fathers, right. they have that relationship with them all the way from the beginning. Which right. are the sons of the children right. today that are that are redeemed. I got something. Revelation fourteen and four, one four four. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins, blameless. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. <laughs> These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. And through the twelve and the disciples that were there at that time, we got a uh, earthly representation of the Lamb, uh, 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 of them following the Lamb, you know, whithersoever he goeth. But that really started in the heavens, you know. And it was twelve, but you know there's going to be twelve thousand out of each tribe. But at the head of that whole thing is going to be the 12 disciples. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's the government. All right. So um, going back to John, uh, first John, the second chapter, um, verse 15, it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Hmm. He's telling you to detach. Yeah. John is like, look, detach. detach yeah. You have, in order to be sanctified with the Lord, in order, to, in order to prove that you're walking with the Lord, you have to be detached from this world. Right. Like, right. Yep, yep. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, all right, which leads to sin, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Mm. 
and the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of the most high abideth forever mm, what is the will of the lord the will of the lord the scripture says the will of the lord is to abstain from fornication right in first thessalonians the fourth chapter right it said literally this is the will of the lord to abstain from fornication abstain from this abstain from that abstain from this that's the will of the lord man so the will of the Lord isn't you just, the will of the Lord isn't just you just being willy-nilly. Uh, God loves everybody. Jesus, lo Jesus loves everybody. You know what I'm saying? No, the will of the Lord comes to standards. Woo, the rest of this chapter, bro. Goodness bro, gracious. It, <laughs> it's hard to stop, bro, because I'm looking like trying to, for time's sake. But it keeps going every It keeps on, I mean, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Let's just get get bring a precept out, uh, but we're gonna get points, you know, from out this chapter. Goodness gracious, go ahead. Well, according to how uh, how about you know, wants us to be removed from uh, sin, the yeah, the yeah, the yeah. The Lord don't dwell in filth. All right. Now, of course, we're gonna go off, but we're the temple of the Lord. We're to separate Jerusalem. The the, the, the that was separate. You know the. The laws are separate from this world. Right. When we received the laws, they were to separate us from the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amalekites, all of these different nations oh, yeah. who did all of these weirdo practices. The he law was, was to keep us clean mm -hmm. from those ways. Right. So if he's saying love not the world, dog, you should try to keep the laws, bro. bro it's filthy, right? Now, you don't go crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we know we, we're not sovereign, so we can, but yo, you can try, bro. Yeah. Right. Stop. Where the yep. world moving, you should be looking yeah. through the opposite. The opposite. Thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Scripture yep. says, "Follow not a multitude to do evil." Right. Straight up. Right. You know. Facts. Well, yeah. Anybody? Okay. This That's is Ecclesiastes twenty-one and one. It says, "My son, hath hath thou sinned? Do so no more. But ask uh, pardon for thy former sin." It says, "Flee from sin, as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near, it." It will bite thee, and if I may, if it's, it goes into a serpent and it uses the serpent as an example, because not only will a serpent just bite you, you might be a little bit, you know what I'm saying, hurt for a minute. If a dog bites you, or if a wolf bites you, or if a lion bites you, you might be a little messed up. But if a serpent bites you, that venom is in your blood. That's right. It's, it's, it's intermingled with your blood, which represents your life. That's right. It right. alter your walk. Right. Mm -hmm. So it says, like in sin to a serpent, and it says, flee from it, like if you see a serpent. Right. You know, because you know if that bites you, that that can cause a long, long lasting effect on your body. It can put you to your, death. Your, your, your cognitive skills. Yeah. You know? Right. That's what it says. Uh, it, it says, um, uh, the, the teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion. Where you at? Uh, this is the rock. Uh, 21 and 2. Sirach 21 and 2. I ain't going to pull it up, but y'all, Sirach 21 and 2. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so like, uh, 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 slaying, uh, slaying the souls of, of men, because uh, the, the lion was slaying yeah. the souls of men. Uh, sin, it slays you. It slays you. Yeah. you flee from sin. Right. Yeah. That's what we, our fall has started with not fleeing from sin. Yep, right up. This scripture is also <laughs> Trust says, in the where it is, says flee uh, youthful lust. Oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah. that lead to sin, man. Yeah. You know? That's Timothy, right? Yeah. Uh, and, it's, it, and we know better because we've been under Yahweh Shah. We've been given the secrets. That's right. We know how to act. So uh -huh. we, you know, that's why it's heavier on us because we, we know to, to do better. That's right. And this world is moving. And so I, was, I was listening to the brothers out there in Atlanta earlier on the highways and they was bringing out some really good points. You know, and one of the points is going into the fact that, you know, for example, it goes with like the, our youthful lusts. Mm -hmm. And when we've been converted into this knowledge, we left our youthful lusts behind and we're, we're trying to do the best that we can mm -hmm. to flee from these things. Right. Right. And if you fall from the truth or whatever the case happens, the Lord is going to put that demon on you. Full, he's going to allow that demon to get you even harder than before. Oh, yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? Because you, if you fled from before, it's going to come back with seven other demons like Yahweh Shai said, which, right? Mm -hmm. Going right. into that point, it made me think about Amos the fifth chapter in the day of the Lord as if a, a lion chases you yeah. and a bear meets you and you leave, you leave from that bear and you, you go into a house and you leave your hand on the wall in that house and a serpent bites you. You know, well, these are like, like sin for an example. 
If you was to flee from that from the beginning, you wouldn't have to worry about that from the end. That's right. But yeah. the simple fact was it wasn't able to be fled from, from the beginning. Right. So these people that are taken, all right, in that day, right. it's going to be because they were not able to flee from that youthful lust right. that is likened unto a lion right. and likened unto a serpent right. as before. As, and now we flee from sin through walking through the spirit. Right. Yeah. It's not the technicalities of the law so much. Right, it's right. walking in the spirit. Right. What will Yahweh Shai do? Right. You see, but we let's get a few more points, but we gotta keep we gotta keep yeah, reading. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it says, "All iniquity is as a two-edged sword; uh, the wound thereof cannot be healed." You know, so so sin is, is, is just something that can't be healed unless you put it off. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and you leave that demon alone. Mm. Right. Mm. Now it is a process because we all in them times of youth for lust, a lot of it was through ignorance. And I want to get this real quick point. Acts 17 and 30, it says, In the times of this ignorance, the most high winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Mm. So once we've been converted into this faith, we know the mysteries and the secrets of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Our pure mind has been stirred back to remembrance. We should walk a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So right. straight up. All right. Not out the fashion of this world, you know, out of that, because we're not ignorant no more in a, in a right. lot of things that right. we're supposed to do now, you know. Right. Yep, yep. Yeah. Although in this flesh, it's, it's, it's a struggle, and one of the main things is you got to examine yourself on every occasion. Every time, walk down this path yeah. is very slippery, man. Straight up. If you can go back to that old, those old yeah. ways, those old tendencies. It's easy. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's why John always mentioned like how you how it's when you go to First John, say the second chapter. And always, he time. always mentions the fact of how you always try. He's like, look, he's the propitiation for your sins. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's like, look, you, this is what you was doing back in the world. If you consider yourself a son of God, he died for that for you, man. Right. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't give you leeway just to walk any kind of way that you want to walk. Right. 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 You know what I mean? But we right. had liberty at the same time, right. so you shouldn't walk like scared and, you know. Right. Right. You walk that right. So, right. Yeah. First John chapter 2 and 18. Little children. It is the last time. So he's wrote. He wrote that. <laughs> he wrote that for us right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's writing to literally to us, the right. church. Yeah. You know, it says, talking about the uh, uh, the the anti messiah. It says, as ye have heard, the anti messiah shall come. Even now are there many anti messiahs. Whereby we know that it is the last time, and we're seeing that, man. The whole world. The whole world is becoming like uh, uh, anti Messiah. Everybody man. that's rebellious. Right. And in Israel, people. you're starting to see Israel become more anti Messiah. Yeah, it's becoming clear that a lot of men really ain't followers of Yahweh Shai. I'll uh, put that out there, too. When you get that word time, I'm sorry, so I was going to make point real quick. When you get that word time, it literally goes into hour. Mm. The last hour. The yeah. last hour. Of like the day. Yeah. Exactly. Very, very interesting. Yeah, like the last, like we at the end. Right, we right, at the right. end. Mm -hmm. Now it's a lot of more points in that chapter, but we'll go to the next one. Man. You know what I'm saying? Did anybody, unless somebody else wanted to go into it's, oh, it's heavy the whole I mean, way out. Yeah, the chapter. whole chapter. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's one of my favorite yeah, chapters. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, John. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, two and five. What point? Chapter, like, do you have any points yeah. in there? Because you t you mentioned already in the beginning of uh, chapter two about uh, like how should I be in the for Right, right. Right, right. Okay, okay, okay. Because on down, it's it's absolutely amazing. It's amazing. Go ahead. You got something? Nah, that was it. All okay. I had out of two. Okay. All right. Uh, it's crazy. So, let's let's read three and three and one through two. Go ahead. No, I was just saying it was crazy because the other day I was I was you know driving home from the gym and I was listening to the first jump. I, I kept I had it on repeat for yeah. hours, and I kept listening to all. I listened to First John like the whole book repeated for hours. Yep. And I was listening to it, and me and my, you know, what I'm saying me and my woman in the car, and she heard that anti messiah scripture come up, and she was like, she was like, dang, she was like, hold up, if that's the case, she she was she even said this. She's a witness. She was like, if that's the case, she was like. That means that you are anti Messiah if you claim that the birth of birth is real. Yeah, oh well, yeah, he says she that. Said that. John like, says oh, that. That's what I was like, that's John right. cuts the virgin birth. He cuts it with in this chapter. Right. Is it where what chapter is that it's in? It's in the same chapter two, I think it is. Okay. Right. We, we'll, let's I mean, bring that out real quick. It may be three. Okay. 
Oh, I found it. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. I knew it. There's so much in that too. That I have not bro. written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know, know it, truth. and that no lies of the truth. Right. Who is a liar but he that denies that our child is the Messiah? He is anti-Messiah that denies the Father and the Son. It says, uh, Whoso denies the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. But there's another one actually. Yeah, that but that it, it, acknowledge, Let's acknowledge go. the Father really just also goes into acknowledging the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Having knowledge of this whole thing is a lot of people who claim themselves to be Christians, claim themselves to really believe. They don't know what's going on. They don't have no idea what's going on. They don't have any knowledge of the Bible. Right. At all. You know what I'm saying? Period. But yeah. they'll be quick to say their own opinion on how they feel. Yep. Their own opinions, but it's not coming out of the true source. John 70, 38. He that believe it on me. That's and the scripture. That's, that's, right. Right. that's right. And Christians don't do that. You right. Know? It's in 1 John 4. Okay, we'll get it there. Okay. This is 1 John 3 and 1. Behold... What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. <laughs> Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Now, that word knoweth, I thought I found that interesting. Uh, let's bring that out. Knoweth uh, in the Greek. Because the world knoweth not us. That word is uh, genosko. Genosko, it says. To learn, to numb, to know, to perceive, to feel, to become, to understand. The world don't understand us. <laughs> and, and all Israel don't understand us because that's the first world. And then the whole world, period, it says to have knowledge of, uh, to understand. It says in Jewish it, idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. Mm. So the wor this world doesn't have that intimate relationship with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Whereas we do as the bride, as the, right, as, the virgin. as the virgin, who are not open to all of these various. So they're going to look at us like that. That's that scripture in uh, uh, Second Edris. That's right. Uh, we read it yesterday as a whore, envieth a virtuous right, right, right. woman. Yep. 16. Yeah. yeah. 16 yeah. A whore. Yep. Yep. Somebody, I got one. Yep. Yep. Somebody get that. Second, uh, Second Edris 16 and 49. 49. Go ahead. This is uh, this is Saint, uh, Saint John 14 and 16. It says. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, right. that he may abide with you forever. He's going to give you another comforter. John told us that. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> but here's the point the back what you were saying. Up, It says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Woo! <laughs> so this world can't receive the spirit of yeah. truth. They can't receive the things that we know because we have that right. intimate relationship. Right. He sucks with us like right. he talks about in right. Revelation the third. Chapter. They're supposed to look at us like, shut uh, up. That's yeah. stupid. Right. They just can't, because they don't right. see it. Right. They weren't eyewitnesses. Right. Because we have, we, we're bringing out the creation story saying right. the angels under Yahweh Shai did it. He came in the flesh. Right. They have their version right. of how the world was created. Well, we're saying, yeah, they have their version of what those aliens may be out there, right. but we have the truth of what it is. Exactly. So they're looking at us like, so they're here to save you. <laughs> Whatever. Right, right, right. Well, we're like, all right. <laughs> Yo, we know what's up. We it know says, what's up. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, back to St. John 14 and 17, it says, Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and ye shall be in him. Right, right. From the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning. And if I may, um, this is a conversation that um, this brother I now had and myself when we lived together a few years ago brought it to my attention going into the Hebrew word that we have called con. You know what I'm saying? Every time we say con, you're saying it because you know something. Right. And when you go into the origins of it, the origins of the word con literally means to know. You know what I'm saying? If you look that word con up, it literally means to know or to have a relationship with something that right. that you have understanding Absolutely. of. And that's why you say con. Because you know it. You right? know it. Like that's that stamp of approval. Right. That's that stamp of approval. Yeah. Right. I see that. Yeah. Right. You can use it for a lot of things, but right. to have that relationship is kind. Right. You know what I'm saying? All right. So back in First John, the third chapter, I read it again. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, letting us know our legacy, man. Mm -hmm. We're fighting to get back to that heavenly estate as the sons of God, sure chosen in heaven, you know. Before we were flesh, we were, you know, heavenly. It says, therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Because, it says, behold, the loved, 
which is beloved, house of David. David means beloved. Now are we the sons of God through obedience. Right. It says in uh, Hosea, in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall it be said, ye are the sons. It's through obedience that now we're sons. Mm -hmm. All right? It says, go ahead. I would say that's why in Romans 8, Paul was like, the Apostle Paul said, he said, now we, we receive the spirit of adoption, whereas we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, right. <laughs> we got that spirit of adoption back, whereas now, we, through Yahweh's blood being shed, we have that sac we, we have that, that intimacy. We have that intimacy in the relationship. Right. We be able to call it Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. He's you communicating with us again. Man, bro, that's heavy. Quick precept. It's the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12. St. John 1 and 12. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood. Not of blood. See, we didn't become the sons of God just because we were born into these family lines. Right, right, right. It's because, it's because we were chosen from the foundation of the earth. That's right, right. That's Go right. ahead. And you always bring up the example of Abraham. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, cause we know that we're of that lineage. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we could really be like, yeah, you know, we're born of blood because our fathers believe this. Right. Their fathers, and we right. know our fathers. Because that's Israelites. important. Right. It has its importance. Right. Right. But it's deeper than that. Yeah. <laughs> like it says in Psalms 24, this is the generation. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is the generation that had ascended up into the hills right. and that has clean hands and such. Right. You mm -hmm. know? But it says, verse 13, which were born out of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the most high. You know, because this is the generation that the Heavenly Father opened their minds up to receive the spirits of adoption. That's it. That the brother Tazama just went into. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're waking up. Right. Mm -hmm. And people will get it misunderstood that like Christians, Christians, they'll get it misunderstood and they'll try to go to that scripture and say, you see, it shows you that you don't got to be an Israelite by blood. That's not what he's saying. Because John was an Israelite by blood. He's going deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a particular generation that was going to come. That was going to receive the whole understanding. And your whole and I'm sorry, and Yahweh shall reveal himself under them. Right. Like the example of what Yahweh brought up in the book of John, the first chapter. When he was baptized, that was a particular generation that saw that baptism, that saw it, that were Israelites. Right. And out of that, that's where the gospel was going to spread. Man. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, this is generation. Now we got more. I got a piece of paper here, Coach Sean. Genesis one forty five and four. One generation shall praise thy works for another. Oh, that generation. Genesis what? Genesis. What the hell? Genesis. 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 Praise thy works to another. 45 and 4? No, 145. Oh, 145. Okay, go ahead. One generation shall praise thy works to another. And that's what's happening right now with the door with that generation. But we praise him until the generation today. It was all back today. Right. One generation, go over and shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Right. The generation of the righteous. That's right. That generation. That generation. You got it. That's that we ain't gonna never get through John. Go ahead. <laughs> no, John so. chapter eight and verse thirty-seven. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Where are you at? John chapter eight and verse thirty-seven. This is a great point. Go ahead. Verse thirty-eight. I speak that which I have. Read thirty-seven again. John chapter eight and verse thirty-seven. I know that you are Abraham's seed. But you seek to kill me right. because my word has no place in you. <laughs> I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And how shall I say it unto them? If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Mm. What did Abraham do? And he paid tithes to Melchizedek. <laughs> you would understand that he's the high priest. That's right. That's what he's, you know. At the end of the chapter, yeah. he says that. Yeah, yeah. He pretty much says that in a roundabout way. Like, yeah, man, before yeah. I was, before, before Abraham, Abraham I was. Yeah, yeah. Because Abraham, he acknowledged, that's, man. Go ahead. I 
Abraham had to stand before Melchizedek, man. He saw him. Great. When you go into before, it doesn't always mean in the past, but it literally needs to present yourself before something that's mighty, man. In front of, like we stand in front of, you know, when we stand before the throne of grace. You know what I'm saying? You stand before that presence, man. Wow. Hmm. Before Abraham was, I, I was, before Abraham, man, bro. Why that's Hey, bro. Hey. You can't get over that. Hey, man. Yahweh Shine, a.k.a. Melchizedek, is the plug. That's right. You can't get, now you cannot get to the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shine, bro. Yeah. Right. You got that slide. First John chapter 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. <laughs> but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. So he talks about him from a heavenly perspective. Now he's saying, look, we're going to be brought back to that heavenly, you know, <laughs> you know. Whoo. And then he saw him in Revelation in that heavenly state. Now it's dope. One thing you got to think about with the spiritual body, with the like we know we're gonna have spiritual bodies. When it describes Yahweh Shine his glory, it says one like unto the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. It says he had feet. So we know that the spiritual bodies are formed. They got hands, they got head, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but we don't know how it's gonna look. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it does this these earthly uh forms are kind of like a representation of what they look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial. Extra, right. We want to have an extra right. add-on to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Because right. right. remember it said one like unto the son of man. The son of man is the son of the earth. Men. Yeah. So he saw him. He was like, damn, you know? But he was in his glorified state. Straight up. So he's telling us, the, the beloved, the house of David, which shall be as God, it says... It does not yet appear what we shall be. He can't ex explain all of the intricacies of it. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We're going to be face to face with Yahweh Shai again. He, now they saw him in an earthly state. You know what I'm saying? Face to face. We all going to get back to see him, you know, in a, as, he is. as he is. As he is right now. Yeah, on the right hand. Right, now watch this. And every man that hath this hope, if you believe that, every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. So if you know this, there's a mindset, there's a fervency you should be walking with within your life. All right, within this truth first, but within your period. You should be, a, 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 if you know this and believe what he just said, Oh man. <laughs> he said we the light of the world. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that very next uh verse, whoso committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And in this chapter, he's basically going into, man, look, you can't just dwell in sin and just be a sinful nigga laden with juice sin ju dripping from you. No, you can't just be like the Lord that. Takes away just sin, because the Lord takes away sin. Just because the Lord takes yeah. He took away that sin from you and your past life and the right. things you was doing in his present life that you in so that you can walk in perfect. Hey, the scripture says, the Howard Shah said it himself, be ye perfect as your father is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Try for perfection. Try for perfection. So he's like, he's going into how sin is a transgression of the law, but right. look, Yahweh Shai died for you because of this. So if you know that the Lord died for you because of this, this is how you need to be walking. To get you back to, to that glory. glory. Right. That's what we remember. That's what we're fighting with you. I need new body. You're sick. You're tired. Do yeah. you really want that body? <laughs> right. At the end of the day, right. that's what you're crying for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight up, bro. So to get there, there's a there's a mindset. It's a seat right here for somebody. You know what I'm saying? Go now. <laughs> you know. Uh, first, now I I I keep reading, and then we'll we'll get a few. And if anybody else got any points in this chapter, you know. But he says, uh, huh? Go ahead. Woo! 
Yeah. Yeah. Keeping the keeping the laws, it keep it cle- it keeps that portal clear for communication. Yeah, yeah. Trying at least. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're constantly when you go off, you be like, damn. You you cry you call you constantly in communication with Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? When when you're focused on doing right. Trying to serve yeah, trying, with a pure heart. With a pure heart. All right. Right, right, right. So it says and ye know, 1 John 3 and 5, and ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Man, that's a cut. <laughs> that's a cut to these people that be like, uh, you know, right. you don't got to, God is all love. You don't got to keep up. Well, hold up. Let's go to the New Testament to prove that real quick. Right. right. He said, look, right. if you love the most high, you're not going to sin. Right. right. What is sin? He just broke it down. It's right. a transgression of the right. law. Right. right. Now, does that mean that you're going to walk perfectly? Right. But right. you're going to strive right. to keep Thanks. what the Lord said to do. And you're it goes strive. into if you're elected, you're, there's no blame on you. Right. That's it. You're already covered. Your right. sins are covered right. through Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to the point where if you do, it's like you're out of character. Right. Right, that's, that's not you. Right, 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 right. It says, um, it says, neither no, verse 7, 1 John 3 and 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He like, look, because I read it in the NLT, it says, dear, dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this, because that's what we were going to be in, op we're going to have that opposition from the Christian church to tell us that, it, that that's their whole focus. Outside of, tell me this, outside of Jesus loves everybody, God loves everybody, you can eat what you want to eat, and we don't have to keep the laws. What is the Christian doctrine? The opposite of that. What's the opposite of what the scripture? I'm saying outside of that, uh -huh. what do they teach? Right. Man. They teach you to they teach they teach you transgression. Right. They teach you to break the law. Right. So he's letting you know. Look, don't let nobody deceive you about this, bro. Right. <laughs> it says, "He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil." Man. All right. And it's ultimately going into those who who are of that mindset. Who this is what your 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 this is what you your intent is. Right, right. This is what you're all about. Willful sin. You of the devil, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now you go off and you fight and you're in but your intent, the inward man, is fighting to not follow that flesh in that sense. Go ahead. And um, just if, if I may. Yeah. You know, when you go into those two laws we mentioned earlier, I wish I said love the most high with all your heart. Right. And love your neighbor as yourself. But the first law is to love the most high with all your heart. Right. And that goes into that self-conduct. And that's something that the Christian church does not teach you. You know, and part of that self-conduct is still those laws and doing it to the best of your ability. Right. And like you would mention, they teach you to evade from those Great. key laws. And right. that's not loving the most high with all your heart and all your soul. But Yahweh Shai said, these are the top two ones that you follow. Right. That's what they evade from, man. You know? So when Yahweh wow. said in 1 John 3 and 4, you know what I'm saying, sin is a transgression of the law, you know, we got to think of the main, obviously the whole law, but what Yahweh Shai said were the two, the, the two heaviest ones out of all of them. Those are the first two, and that's something that Westernization does not subscribe to. Right. And they don't push. Right. You know, they push opposition of that, man. Right. Which again is the image of the beast, free right. will. Right, right, right. <laughs> free will, now, free will. I'm going to read this, and I want y'all brothers, this is a question. 1 John 3 and 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. What does that mean? I believe it means because you're covered by your Yahweh's blood. And the Holy Spirit being right. right. I, got, I, got well, I was going to finish that. I mean, shit. Yeah, okay. yeah, I was going to finish my point. In James, <laughs> in, in James, it goes into that engrafted word that's given within us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got that engrafted word. Sin right. cannot dwell within you because it's been engrafted within you. Right. right. Now, you, you, you're, you're making a good point. You chose in front of the foundation. Of there you go. Okay. That's that's when we were born of the Most High, and okay. we were born for the purpose of getting the victory. Gotcha. That's the victory, yeah. meaning the spirit in you was one of those spirits chosen. Let's get it uh, from the founder. Somebody get that real quick. Ephesians four, Ephesians one, Ephesians one. 
Ephesians 1. Um, let's just get it real quick. Um, start at uh, 3. Just listen to this. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the power and Father of our Lord, Yahushua Mashiach, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In heavenly places. In heavenly places. He's blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places, man. You he saying in Hamashiach? Go ahead. It says, uh, verse four. Well, I'll read verse three again. It says, "Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world." That we, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Without blame. Without blame. Psalms 32. That's what that means. Yes. Psalms 32. That's the, that's the breakdown of that. So, so basically being predestinated. Predestinated. That's the victory. That He said you've overcome the wicked one. John is saying some heavy stuff, bro. <laughs> to, to think about. That's where we were born because you have the first... Because just the first fruits alone in a carnal sense is based upon you gathering the first fruits of your 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 increase of your what you planted mm -hmm. and giving it to the Heavenly Father were in the heavens, just like the Levites. The firstborn right. among right. them were right. were literally set aside yeah. for the duties of the temple. They were the firstborn. They were the firstborn. Yeah. The, 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 you know what I'm saying? Well, in the spirituals, the elect are the firstborn the firstborn no. church that's right that's set right. aside now don't you know in revelation 6 it Ooh. tells you that the souls of the righteous are mm -hmm. under the altar in the heavens yeah 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 <laughs> go ahead go ahead I got something for you real quick this is first peter 1 i'll read verse 22 but the point is in verse 23 it says seeing ye have purified your souls and obeyed the truth through the spirit of the unfeigned love of the brethren this is, now, this is the Apostle Peter speaking, the head of the church, right? See that ye love one another. Where you at? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, but the point is in verse 23. Okay. I'll read verse 22 again. It says, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit, as right. the unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible Woo! by the word of the most high which liveth and abideth forever which is Yahweh Shai yeah. <laughs> we, we were the first spirits born after Yahweh Shai bro. Right, man, bro. the Come elect on. and then everything else came from them <laughs> that's the glory we trying to get back bro. and each creation year I was thinking about this each create it was a thousand years so imagine what they, uh, them and Yahweh Shai were doing for each a thousand year period. <sighs> and then it tells you that those that uh, uh, have that word are going to, for a thousand years, for the first thousand years in the kingdom, directly rule under him and setting up the kingdom of heaven. Bro. Just like from the beginning. That's what we're getting back from the beginning. We're going to be back with Yahweh Shai, and this time we're going to rule on earth. With those heavenly bodies, this time we ain't gonna have to have this. This is what fucked it all up. This flesh. But now we're gonna have those heavenly bodies, so we're good under the second Adam. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the. Yep. Yep. You gotta be born again. You gotta get back to that heavenly state. But it's a straight gate you gotta go through to get to that. Yeah. Go ahead. This is uh, the book of Hebrews 12 and 20. I'm going to start at 22. Key points Woo! This is a heavy point. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living power. And uh, that goes into, you know, heavenly, you know, Jerusalem, which is the teaching of peace. Right. It says the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. We all sit in those heavenly places for the elect. Verse it tells you we have our body in the heaven in First John, First Corinthians, the fifth, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, I believe. Go ahead. John, and if I may, that's a great point because even Ephesians two, yeah. it goes into how we sit with Yahweh Shai in those heavenly places. Right. Going back to if we are, we, we could possibly very well be those souls that were predestined from the beginning, mm -hmm. uncorruptible, like the brothers going into. Verse twenty three, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. That's the point right there. 
which are written in heaven. Church of the firstborn. That's it. Yeah. Because Yahweh Shai is the firstborn, yeah. but the church of the firstborn is an accumulation of those spirits right. that were that were first created. The now, first fruits? The, the firstborn. And then, it, you know, when you read it in Exodus 13, I'm sorry, 3, and Numbers 13, maybe vice versa, but it goes into the law that's designed directly for the firstborn seed that's created. And it goes into how he had transferred that to the Levites being the firstborn among all the children of Israel, which ultimately goes into those that were set aside to do the duties in the priesthood and all things that were destined for the Heavenly Father. And that's what we're all fulfilling right now, man. The church of the firstborn, that role is given unto the elect. Lord will the word of that number. Mm -hmm. It says to the general assembly of the church, the congregation of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Which shows you it's in a company of people. Yahweh Shai said, you know, rejoice that, you know, you can rejoice that you can tread over scorpions and serpents. Right. You rejoice because your names are written, written in, in heaven. heaven. You know what I'm saying? Woo! That's the church of the firstborn right That's there. That's it. That's it. It says, bro. which are written in heaven to the most high, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the just. Men made perfect. The just men made perfect. Right. You know what I'm saying? So these right. are just men that are made perfect through Yahweh Shai. From the beginning. Right. No. right, right. Now, go ahead. Ephesians 2, verse 5, it says, Even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together through Mashiach, by grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Mashiach and Hawashiach. And like I said, um, you just mentioned, uh, like, we're... Can you, read, can you read that again? Uh, this is uh, Ephesians 2. Shit. Mm -hmm. I'm starting verse 5. It says, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened... Uh, even if we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Mashiach, by grace ye are saved. Mm -hmm. it says, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. In heavenly places. Wow. In heavenly places. Like the elders been mentioning this whole time, this this congregation that the Lord is talking about is a body of, of individuals who are written in the heavens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And John is emphasizing on that consistently. Like, look, you've known him from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He keeps emphasizing the fact, like, look, these body of men that's going to receive this, this is the same body mm -hmm. of men that's been written from the beginning, from the understanding, from, right. from the heavens, man. This yeah, is a bro. body of, like, it's just like the question that the brother was asking on the other side of the camp yesterday. He was like, man, so, he was like, the, he was like, the son of the, the, the true children of the most high, it's all spiritual. But he doesn't understand the fact that the spiritual part that you're saying is correct. Yeah. But it goes back to, it goes back to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you're right yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. what spirit are you talking about? Yeah. This is talking about from the, this is a body of, you know, Family. Right, chosen for a purpose on the earth. You keep mentioning the family yeah. reunion. Like, yeah, it's a family reunion. It's, that's heavy, right, bro. Right, like right. this is actually a family reunion. Right, right, because they created it under Yahweh Shai, and only they were to keep it. Yep. But what happened was sin. Now we have these heathen ruling it. So we had to ultimately witness. First of all, we had to know and taste evil, but we had to witness the, the our own creation being ran in you know disarray, you know. So, so that we can, yeah, we're falling away so that we can, under, you know, come back to our glory, you know, the sons of God. It said, what does it say? The the, the creation yearned for the, the manifestation, manifestation of the sons, sons of God, of because that's when everything will be able to. <sighs> yeah, everything will chill. Like Thanos yeah. at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All these wars, the earth is just like shit, you know. Stop. <laughs> yeah. But the word was spoken, so everything had to be fulfilled. Um, we back in First John three. Um, let's see. Yeah, he was at he was at verse ten. Uh, Unless you want to jump to chapter four, maybe. Yeah, we can jump to chapter four. Um, let's read verse six. What, what First John three and sixteen? It says hereby. It says, it says, hereby perceive we the love of God because he, oh, no, there was another point I wanted to make. Verse 13, here you go. It says, marvel not my brethren because it's being that we're coming in this stead 
and this is our fight. You know, he's like, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Uh, that's right, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's letting you know, like, look, you're not going to receive love from the world, bro. Yeah, I wish I said it. If yeah. you love the world, the world will love its own. Right. So if you coming in the stead, if you coming to the straight gate, you going to be looked at as opposition. So John, like, look, the world going to hate you for this message. Don't trip. You're right. like, look, this is what it's about. Right. <laughs> Right, yeah, right. Of, you know, that's, that's, that's the distinction between right. those who worship Satan and those who back Right, right, right. Verse 18. Um, my, my little children, let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed, mm. in truth. <laughs> All right, but in deed and in truth, man. So be doers, man. Yeah. What verse was that? 18. 18. Okay. Yep. Bro, bro, verse tw I'm sorry. If I made verse yes. twenty, yeah, bro, read it. Verse twenty through twenty-two is heavy. Read it. Bro. Read it. Read it. Kind of, this is First John chapter three, verse twenty. For if our heart condemn us, the Most High is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward the Most High. So. Your heart, if, if your heart don't condemn you. Your mind. Your mind, if your mind doesn't condemn you, and you have that confidence in Yahweh Shah because you know that you're walking according to the, what the Lord told you to do. But if your heart does condemn you, right, the most high is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. He knows your intent at the end of the day. Right. So you can't let your, and the scripture says in Syriac, or, uh, I want to say, it's, yeah, second Ezra. It says, uh, blessed is the man who conscious has not condemned him. You know, right. Teach you know what I'm saying? So we can't let a, Satan will play yeah, in your mind and make sure your conscience condemn you of things that you've done. But the most high greater than that. Right. Because if, you, if you've been selected from the foundation of the earth to receive salvation, you cannot allow your conscience to condemn you from the ultimate goal of victory. Yeah. Which Yahweh Shai has already, he's already paid that path for us, man. Right. We've all done things that have been fucked up, excuse me. We've all done things that have been messed up. Whereas you, in your conscience, you'd be like, damn, man, I don't know if the Lord, you know what I'm saying? But the Most High, he's greater than that. He wouldn't have us doing this for no reason. Now, Shah already overcame the world, man. He overcame it. Everything That's just has to play out in the flesh. You know? Right, you know? Right, right. John is like, look, don't allow your mind to condemn you. Don't allow it to make you, whereas now, with your mind condemning you, now you're trying to find fault in, in, in the doctrine. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what all these different guys end up doing. They fall out, and then their minds condemn them, and they try to find fault in the doctrine. Because ultimately, like the Lord said, they were not from me. They wasn't in the vine from the beginning. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I'll read verse 22 real quick. It says, and, and this is heaven, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments mm -hmm. and do those things that are pleasing in the sight. So the Lord, when he said, look, if you ask this in my name, I'm going to give it to, unto you. That doesn't apply to everybody. Yahweh Shah was saying that to those who's doing the things that the Lord said. The Lord, Yahweh Shah said what? He said, why callest thou me Lord, Lord, if we ain't going to do the things that I tell you to do? So he said, look. We keep his commandments because what? If we ask the Lord to do these things for us, he's going to do it for us because he told us that. The Lord said, look, I'm going to do this for you. But the thing is, I'm going to do this for you if you're doing what you tell, if you doing what I tell you to do. Right, right. And it ultimately goes into belief in that. Because we're going into those times when your flesh can have you condemned, whatever the case is. And we're all in that flesh. So we all have that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's that understanding. That the Most High, we know He's greater than our thoughts and our mind and what we what we think, even our condemnation that we have in our mind. There's even times we can focus on a negative, whatever the case is. The Most High is like, look, you got the positive right here. You know what I'm saying? So in that in this flesh, we have to focus on the good. You know what I'm saying? We're all in this flesh, but we have to focus on the good. You know what I'm saying? But I got a quick precept, real quick, and this is in uh, Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twelve. And it says, for your for our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and in godly sincerity, Ooh, mm -hmm. man, you know, and there's more to it. But, I mean, earlier in the previous chapter, John harped on brotherly love. 
you know, and obviously we know there's 613 laws and we try our best to our ability to keep them. But what does Peter say? He said, charity covered the multitude of sins. You know what I'm saying? And if you're keeping that charity and you're, and you're really sincere in what you're doing, it's going to cover a lot of things that even in this flesh we think ain't covered, man. If you're doing your whole heart and in godly sincerity, man, a lot of that can be covered just by how you treat a brother. And your mm -hmm. conscience toward the most high with what you're doing with the brother. You know what I'm saying? A lot of rewards come just off of that. And John harped on that a lot, especially when you read chapter 3. He harped on that very heavily, man. Mm -hmm. But when you continue, it says, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of the most high. And that's something to consider, too, that we are under that grace. Because Yahweh Shai's blood could be very, is very well covering that elect. You know what I'm saying? Which gives us the green light to just go. Obviously, you know what I'm saying? We don't use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. But we've been given that green light to go and profess his name and to be brothers one toward another. Because as the, the, the priest brought the precept out earlier in Ephesians 2, we're all in those heavenly places. You know? In those heavenly places, meaning we're serving great men. Right. These ain't just normal people that we're sitting amongst, listening to, conversing with. Right. Preaching with the gospel with right. these are great men that you're serving, man. So serving with these great men can cover a multitude of plenty of sins. But the opposition of that is that that's transgress. You lie to a brother, you treat a brother like shit. The same thing goes vice versa to the point where you are condemned. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you'd be better off treating a random heathen or you know, uh, you know somebody else like that, but not the Lord's chosen. Absolutely. And that's why it says, going into, you know, if you offend one of my little ones, it'd be better for you to have a millstone cast upon your neck and get thrown into the sea. But there's a little more to this precept, and, you know, y'all got it. I just want to bring this out real quick, this precept to what y'all are saying. But by the grace of the Most High, we have had our conversation, which goes into anastrophe in the Greek, all right, which goes into a lifestyle, all right? You have a conversation in the world and more abundantly to you. For we write not other things unto you, then what we read or acknowledge, and I trust he shall acknowledge even to the end. So we have to acknowledge this to the end. We have to walk this walk even to the end. It's easy to do it a month, a year, three years, five years, whatever. But how about it to the end right. when it really matters? It's a constant test of all punishment. That's right. 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 right, right, right. All right, so uh, we'll get a little, let's get First John, the fourth chapter. Um, First John 4 and 1, beloved, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of the most high, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby ye know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Yahweh Shai is come in the flesh is the son of God. <laughs> right, from the seed of man. Right, because ultimately this gives credit, this basically going into we believe that the throne of David is going to be established because that throne will be established due to direct descendant of David. It was the direct sin descendant of David that would come and offer himself up as a sacrifice, man. And the world, they don't teach that. Now, you do have particular people who, who, who don't believe in the virgin birth, so to speak, but they don't look at it from the Davidic standpoint. Right. You know what I'm saying? It all goes through that the loins and lineage of David, which I was shy was to be raised up. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe in the kingdom of heaven. You, you're against the most high. <laughs> like vocab, he's an anti-Messiah. It says, it says, in every spirit that confess it not that Yahweh Shah has come in the flesh. Okay. And this is because it says he took not on the nature of angels, but he took on, on him the seed of Abraham right. through Isaac, through Jacob, through uh, Judah. Right. Through Perez, through eventually down the line David, all right, he would come. It was evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, man. He's born under the law. He was born under the law. <laughs> you know, and if you don't, and, and the people who are who don't believe that, they're not in the truth. Yeah, yeah. He's letting you. This is how. This is how you know you're dealing with somebody who understands the truth. You know what I'm saying? Now you got people who acknowledge this and still bug the hell out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just real, just, yeah. just no, go ahead. But um, he mentions confession. Right. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's something that a lot of people ain't doing even in right. history. Yeah. It's if they situation. believe it, they don't even talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like um, some, a quick precept that comes to mind is when you're out of said, you confess me before the Father. Right. I'll confess you before the angels. Right. If you deny me, right. I will deny you before the angels. Right. In her previous chapter, Yahweh right. said, he that denied me is the right. anti Messiah. Well, there you go. Yep. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh has come in the flesh through the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not of God. And this is that spirit of anti-Messiah. <laughs> Wherefore, and, and you can see Esau's attacking the seed of man. You see what I'm saying? But, but, but people who don't believe in the, that the Lord had a father, like they don't, you don't understand what you're saying. Like, it says, um, in every spirit that confess it not, that Yahweh Shai is come of the in the flesh is not of God. Right. And this is the spirit of anti Messiah, whereof ye have heard that it should come. Mm -hmm. All right? And even now, already is it in the world. <laughs> That's, he's talking to us, bro. Yeah. He's, like, he's talking to us. That spirit of anti Messiah is here. He is here. Yeah. John, John is going to be here. Yeah. We just read that as a, that was the very first piece that we opened up. Yeah, I wish I said, when I come, until I come, he's not going to, bro. John's like, look, this, this, this spirit's going to be here. Right. And we're with, literally witnesses. And it's showing you as guys that claim, can claim themselves to be Israelites, too. Right, mm -hmm. right. Because the previous verse clearly said it. He that confesses that the Yahweh Shai from my is coming to flesh is of the most high. You know, so he's going into the correlation of that confession. Right. You got guys that did right. not confess that back then and guys today right. that will say they Israelites, but right. they will, will not have the testimony. And they're going to persecute us. You know? They do it through the key keyboards, but it's going to get people fit to come see us soon. Because they fit to start losing on another level. And they're going <laughs> to be hurt. All right. Verse uh, 1 John 4 and 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because they're going to come. But be not dismayed, the incredulity. It tells us don't be worried about that. Right, right. Because greater is he that is in you, all right, than he that is in the world. Right. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, right. and the world hear them. They got all of the followers. Yeah. They, right. they get money. That's right. Son, that's why they got all, you know what I'm saying? Because right. they're speaking of the world. Even particular Israelite camps. They speak to the world, but just with an Israelite twist. Absolutely. But they're speaking to the this world, the fashion of this world. The forwarding of the world. For, there you go. The world's energy. That's right. That's right. You know, more than anything, it's the energy of the world, how it caters to women. You know, the the adding rapping gang culture into the into the ministry because brothers rap. You know what I'm saying? Right. But but adding that culture into the ministry and when saying this yeah 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 all of that it's saying that ultimately you are uh you anti-messiah bro. bro you're doing it you're going up some other way you know go ahead real quick um but um man i was having a conversation with a beloved brother and he brought up a great point going into a lot of these guys that go into the gimmicks you know, obviously, like you said, brothers rap this, that, and the third, but it's not really, it's not, it's not put, you know what I'm saying, into the into the yeah. gospel as it doesn't yeah. need to be. But if you, you know, let's sit back and consider it. You got Jake that are around the world that might be in different areas of the world that might not be accustomed and have any knowledge of the rap culture, the gang culture, the drip culture. And when they see that, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's unattractive to the elect. Because, you know, a lot of guys that are into this stuff, they, they do it in a westernized way. It might be cool and he might get all the views from a westernized mindset. But what about those different brothers that are waking up in those poverty stricken areas of in Arabia or in Mexico or in Syria or whatever the case right. is, man? It has to be something that's universal unto the elect. That's right. Just you the know? word. That's why it's that's, very important to focus on the it, word. It, it's strictly the word, right. man. Right. You know? Verse. They were scattered. They yeah. got to hear the word. Right. On side. Right. It's all leading up to your Hava Shai coming back. That's why this great gathering is happening from around the world. It's right. And it's still the Hava Shai coming back. Yep. Because the word for some Jake is just not enough. 
It's the simplicity of the Yeah, the simplicity of a Mashiach. Jake always got to yeah. add and do the right. things like right. I was right. saying. Right, right, right. The serpent got him. <laughs> yeah. That's um, what I was saying. If you come up any other kind of way, then, you know, like, it's not a, it's not a meal. Right. right. If you right. go any other kind of way, it's good. Oh, like, the Lord made it plain in what you need to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you got to First John, the fourth chapter, in the, in the sixth verse. So that's why the world hear a lot of people, because they're of the world. They speak to the world. All right, verse six, we are of the most high and knoweth God and, and he that knoweth God heareth us. All right. We ain't go listen to no nigga talking about you ain't got to keep the laws. I'm not going to follow the Ten Commandments. Like you, you out of your mind. That's why the world hear you. That's why you got that congregation. And that money because you talking that bullshit. And the world is on that bullshit. We are of God and know it. All right. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. <laughs> we see it. If you're not talking about being obedient and, 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 and uh, following in a particular energy in a way that Yahweh came through the loins and lineage of David. You ain't talking about the. You ain't really talking about this Bible, man. You're not talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Okay. I got Go ahead. First Corinthians two and twelve. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of the Most High. Mm. Which things mm. also we speak not in the world's, excuse me, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Concerning, excuse me, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The natural goes into things that come out of the world. That's where you get nature from. That's right. Nature grows from the earth, which comes out of the world, man. So that's the natural man. They, they're groomed in the world, and they've never left that natural worldly state that they supposedly woken out of. Anybody else got points in verse chapter 4? I'll jump down to uh, Because there's a bunch of points But verse 16 It says And we have known and believed the love That God hath to us God is love And he that dwelleth in love Dwelleth in God And God in him Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment. See? <laughs> because as he is, so are we in this world. Wow. He in the light right now. He light. And then the scripture said, remember this and show yeah. yourself men. Right. That's right. It right. says, as he is, so are we in this world, in this age that we're living in right now, as the Lord is right now. We right. should be striving to walk in that way. That's right, 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 right. <laughs> in this wicked world right. that we live in. Man. Amongst all of the hell, we walk boldly towards that grace, man. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're approaching the Holy of Holies with, you know, with boldness, man. Like standing stiffly, standing stiffly yeah, because we're not condemned, right. all right, by the idols of this world. We don't have the affection of this world, so nothing holds us back. You know, we believe wholeheartedly on this truth, man. When you when you love this world. You're held back in the spirit. There's a limit to where you're like, I'm not going through that for the Lord. Because of the, 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 the opinions of this world or what this world may say. And that's ultimately going to be the test at the end of the day. Who really hates his life unto death? Because if you, if, you if you really fully hate your life, what they say and what they believe and how you can be harmed by it doesn't affect. Death doesn't affect your stance. Fast. Fast. <laughs> Death, you know what I'm saying? That's not the end all be all of your decision making of what can happen to you in the flesh. Right. You man. keep your integrity, man, because the spirit of the most high dwelleth in you. Mm. All right. It says, where are we at? Verse, what verse are we at? Yeah, verse 17. 17. And we'll read through a little bit more. It says, did I? You read 17. Okay. Yeah, that was 18. Good. There is no fear in love. <laughs> if you truly believe that he is, what are you afraid of? That's right. That's, that's that boldness. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It says in the day of judgment, you should have that boldness. Right. And Because, you know, we're in this time where things are happening, but we in that time right now where, where, where the Lewis judgment is heavy, man. 
the, the servants are going to be manifested. I mean, you know, we know we believe with the servants, but the world is going to see it when that day comes, man. And it's also going to be a reflection of those that don't have fear toward the world. You know, because it says in the scriptures, um, you know, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So when that day of judgment comes, the elect are going to stand full. Right. And right. the world is going to be like, wisdom of Sodom and Fox. God, right. please, these are they. Right. Right. And if the most high be for us, he's going to be against us. Right. right. Yep, it say, but perfect love casteth out fear, because he that, I mean, because fear hath torment. If you're doing the wrong thing, if you're doing the wrong thing, you're going to fear the Lord. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why they don't want to talk, that's why Christians don't want to talk about the kingdom of heaven and judgment. And they don't want to talk about it. Right. <laughs> Esau too, he wants to, there was no flood, he don't want to talk about judgment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it says, uh, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. You ain't flowing. Fear, people with fearful mindsets usually disrupt the flow of the spirit and the brotherhood, too. It says, we love him. Uh, we love him because he first loved us. So we can jump to the next chapter. Go ahead. Uh, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 12. It says, The fear of Yahweh by Shimei Hashai is the beginning of his love, and faith is, is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Mm -hmm. You know, so without the fear of Yahweh by Shimei Hashai, how, how, how are you going to know who he is? Right. That's a good point. Right, That's right. It's the confidence. Yep. You know, and, and then the faith is the, the beginning of cleaving unto right. him. So without right. faith, <laughs> right and faith without works is dead so it, it all goes back to something that the elect would be doing a mindset that they would instill in the earth man it's something they're doing man there is no way to love but by keeping the laws and this is what separates us from this world what we do how we operate is different from this world point blank period first john chapter five and Let's see. Two, by this we know that we love the children of the Most High when we love God and keep his commandments. And keep talking about that. He's dead set on the mindset, bro. It says, and he ain't talking about just walking around with fringes. He's talking about your energy, what you're doing, man. Yeah, you fulfilling the law through love, man. That's the fringes right there. The fringes mind. are in your mind, That's man. That's right there. That's the remembrance. Yeah. It says, but this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. It's not a burden. Right. Doing righteous is fun. Doing righteousness is fun, actually. It benefits you, too. Right. All right. Yeah, I got a precept for you real quick. So far. It's, it's fulfilling. Right. Right. And that's what exactly what Yahweh Shah said. He that loves you keepeth my commandments. Mm -hmm. Y'all was trying to say the same. John literally is repeating what y'all was trying to say. He kept repeating it, bro. This is a quick one. Matthew 11 and 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find a rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It goes until it's not grievous. Yahweh Shai carried the heaviest portion that we cannot do. Right. You know, so it's not, right. it's not grievous unto right. us. Right. You just have to fight. You have to fight. You have to fight the good fight. It says in 1 John chapter 5 and 4, For whatsoever is born of God <laughs> overcometh the world. <laughs> you were written into the story Absolutely. to win. You know? Absolutely. And this is the victory that overcometh this world or the world, even our faith, our testimony. That's it. They overcame him through the word of their testimony, That's man. That's right, man. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Yahweh Shai is the son of the Most High. <laughs> All right. I'm going to jump to verse. Oh, that next verse? Yeah. I mean, you know, my nah. numbers, but I mean, you know, we've, we've been going, but let me see. Yeah, this is he that came by water and blood, even Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, not by water only, but by water mm -hmm. and blood. And it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is truth. And what does that mean? He, this is he that came by water and by blood. Remember when he was on that cross when he had written everything? Because during that last supper, when they was eating up, he said what? You know what I'm saying? Eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Right? 
So when he was pierced on that cross, what came out? It wasn't only blood, but it was water. Now, that, what did the blood represent? The life on your doorpost and such. What does the water represent? The cleansing, man. When you read that, that goes into how Yahweh Shai, his sacrifice covered every little thing and it cleansed us from our wickedness, man. And it, when I read that, it made me think of the totality of what John was talking about when you read 1 John. Going into loving the Father with all your heart, loving them, loving them, your neighbor as yourself. You're going to be cleansed from all those different things, man. Because that's what a sacrifice was meant for. Right. That's what, you know, that was the that was the heavy portion that I received when I read the fifth chapter in 1 John. You know what I'm saying? Which also goes back into the law. You know what I'm saying? The blood. But also there was a part of the law where you had to burn a sacrifice and drench it with water, man. Because that represented the cleansing of that sacrifice. You know? Right. Man, where we at? That was verse six. Anybody? Any other points, brothers, want to make? One more, one more point. Yeah. Yeah. One more point. I'd rather say is in verse nine where it talks about how the Most High pretty much had his testimony of Yahweh Shai. So the testimony. That's what I was. Yep, I got it. Now nah, I'm gonna read it, and you can break it down. It says First John five and nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Right. So the witness of the Most High is greater than the witness of men. So we believe what man tells us, right, about Yahweh Shai. Now it's not me, and that the faith by hearing gives us that faith. But the witness of Yahweh is greater than the witness right. of men because he testified of Yahweh Shai yeah. from the beginning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You got it. I'm saying. Right. For this is the witness of God, which he had. All right, testified of his son. He that believeth on the Son of God have the witness in himself. He that believeth not have uh, believe it not, God have made him a liar. Uh -huh. He made him a liar. So if you don't believe, if you don't believe the witness of the heavenly Father Yahweh Himself, that would make the Most High a liar because He testified of Yahweh Shah. Right. Right. When 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 when. when when Yahweh Shai got baptized, mm -hmm. he said, what, this is my beloved son who I want to hear you. Right. When, he, right. when he went up to that mountain and he seen, and uh, in, in Peter, James, and John seen Elijah and Moses, and they was like, man, we need to build, we need to build three tabernacles. He's like, no, yeah. Yeah. this is my beloved son who, right. who I want right. to please hear, hear him. Right. He also they heard the words. Slacker, I'm sorry, he said, he, they, they, heard the, they heard his words. Right. Peter testified to that. He was like, man, we heard the voice of the Lord. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We heard that verse. Yep. We heard that voice. He also testified him in Exodus. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Where, you know what I'm saying? And in Deuteronomy. Ex Exodus 23. This is my angel right yep. here. You know what I'm saying? He's right. Here. I was going to make, that's the point I'm going to make. Okay. It says, <laughs> it says, for this is the witness of God, which he have testified of his son. All right. Oh, no. Verse, verse, where we at? Verse 10, right? It says, because he believe it not the record that God gave of his son. The record doesn't just start when he comes in Matthew. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the record exactly. goes back to the beginning. The record of Adam. Mm -hmm. And you got people who deny that Adam is your, uh, your that, that means you don't understand what, what's going on here. Right. Right. You don't understand the scripture you have. If you deny reincarnation, you don't fully understand the Bible. Right. Right. The, the record of Yahweh Shai goes back to the beginning. This whole thing is a fulfillment of the Lord's word, man. Right. All right. And that goes um, to show that they don't they don't even know the Bible because when you read in Luke, in, uh, Luke 24, he got. tells you uh, <laughs> right. he tells you comes you know all things must be fulfilled. Right. That's right. written of him. Right. Like, you got it. And he yeah. says Adam is the son of God right. in in Luke the third chapter. Because he encompasses everything that's written right. in the scriptures. Man. Everything. That's why in Psalms 40 it says, I, "For lo, I come in the volume of the book, right. it's written of me." Right. right. Think about it. Everybody on the earth now are here. They're here because of Adam mm -hmm. and his descendant Noah. <laughs> yeah. right. Everything is subject unto him in all ways, man. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. So, like you said, just starting in Matthew, that don't really fully explain right. who our Lord is. Man. Right. This is uh, St. Luke 24 and 44. Ah, I was about to get it. He, says, <laughs> he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning me, he was written of in those. Yeah, 
It's it's in the New Testament. Yeah. But peep this. It says, then open ye their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Because you ain't going to understand the scriptures unless you understand prophecy. Right. That's the testimony of our Lord. That's what John right. the Revelator said. Right. right. When the angel came to him, you know? Right. Right. That's, that's the point on that. Right. Um. Where we at? Verse 11. And this is the record that God have given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son hath not life. <laughs> Man. And it's, this is the only way. You know the funny thing, Yashuan? The What's beginning that? of it goes into, you know, when it's the light and how you describe the light being right. Yashuan. Right, right, you right. Know, and they said right. this had that, that testimony of right. the light. Right. Go ahead. And if anybody else got any other points in First John 5, you know. This is uh, John chapter 6. We can end it. How shall I answer and say it unto them? This is the work of the Most High, that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest us thou, then, that we might see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat mammon in the desert, mm -hmm. as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then how shall I say unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. Mm -hmm. For the bread of the Most High is he whom cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. That's Yahweh Shah. He's, mm -hmm. he's that manna. He is that. He's that manna, that hidden manna. That's how we have this hidden manna today, because it's being sent down from the right hand side of the Most High, man. Man, and you know at that time how highly valued the manna was to you know the circumcision. They you know were real big on the story of the of, of uh, customs of our fathers. You know what I mean? He, I was like, look, I'm even more important than that. Right. That's definitely that, that, that has to be taken. Like that. He told Satan that in Matthew four, man shall not live off bread mm -hmm. alone by every word. That proceeded out of the mouth of that talk, which is him. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking when I read that. Before. It's me, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's why I said in Psalms, "Who is he that ascended and descended?" Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it mm -hmm. correlates him to being the Word of the Most High in the First John. Yahweh Shai is the only one, not only to ascend back up, because Elijah Ooh, ascended mean, up. Yep. He mm -hmm. not ascended up, but Yahweh Shai is the only mm -hmm. one that ascended up and is going to descend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's the only. He fulfilled that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got one. Real Elijah quick. did come back down. Oh, I, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know what no, I'm I heard somebody uh, say that. Yeah, yeah. But Elijah. Oh, did. I almost forgot to bring this out. Yeah. It's an oldie but a goodie. This is Saint John five and thirty nine. It says, "Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me." Mm. So just going back to the word, Yahweh Shah, he's mm -hmm. an embodiment of the word. Right. He's the word become, that was made flesh. He's the only one chosen to be that sacrifice and come through the loins and lineage of David and right. do his duty, man. And right. He did it. He did right. everything that was, he fulfilled everything he fulfilled that was written right. in the word. Everything. <laughs> everything. He was the high priest, he was yeah. the sacrifice. King. The morning, the evening sacrifice, right. the scapegoat. It was everything. Yep, yep. We'll end it off. Just uh, 1 John 5 and 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. This Ooh. is what it concludes. <laughs> Knowing this, know that the world's going to hate you and you're going to be frustra frustrated looking at this shit. <laughs> and we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding through the Comforter that we may know him that is true and we are in him, that is true, even his son, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, this is the true God, all right, and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols of mine. Man. <laughs> that's, how, that's how he ended it off. So I guess we'll just do the questions after this. So with that, we'll give all praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakudash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.